and our top story for the day. We're moving from the world of chess now to the world of tech. What if we said that AI is now learning our language? So not just English or even Hindi, but even a glorious mix of the more tricky Hinglish. So picture this. AI that understands what we speak in Hinglish or pure Hindi and not even that, now LLMs that will be able to use Hinglish, Hindi, for everything that AI could be used for. So we're talking about banking, insurance, building your own AI-powered apps, designed to make technology accessible to all corners of the country. What we're going to be talking about in just a second is something that can be a framework for more vernacular languages. Hindi is just the start. It's not just a random tech experiment. It's a significant leap towards making AI relevant to the people who need it most across our country. So today on the program, we show you some and introduce you also to some Indians and some Indian companies that are accelerating the AI game for us. India, which has witnessed, remember, India even dominated the computer science sort of tech globally. We were up there, really out there in the race, which is why you see a lot of Indians now at the top of the tech firms in the world from Google to Microsoft to the rest of it. But how exactly will this AI game sort of pace out? How will India exactly ace that battle as well? Let's bring it out with our guest. We've got Manu Jain. He's the man who made waves at uh, Xiaomi and is now steering the ship for G42 India. He runs a brand named Hindi large uh, language model called Nanda, named after India's tallest peaks, uh, which makes it very exciting as well. So we want to understand more from him. We'll also be joined in a little moment from now with Smith Dagli. He's a leading AI expert and a in AI technologies. And he's also delves into generative AI and uh, you know all of that, how it's pacing out with a special focus on cybersecurity. Let me first start with Manu. Hi, good morning. Lovely to see you. We want to first get a broader view from you. Where does India really stand in this sort of global AI race at the moment? AI is the word everybody loves to use, abuse these days. But when it comes to innovation in AI, how is India paced out? Uh, if you look at today, um, the entire AI industry across the world, uh, a lot of this started from the Western world. And uh, if you look at companies, uh, which are building large language models or which are building AI applications. Majority of them or many of them started from the West. But slowly and gradually, uh, this is moving towards the East and a lot of companies from Middle East, from India, from Eastern part of the world are building great LLMs or AI applications, uh, which have the power of transforming our lives. If you look at specifically India, India is home to about 1.5 billion people. Majority of the population is young. India has probably one of the highest data consumption when it comes to mobile phones. Uh, and India has more than 30 mm. languages that we speak. So it is just natural that mm. a lot of AI applications, including LLMs, large language models, are built for India. You know, we have this concept called as equitable AI, which means everybody in this world should have equitable rights to be able to to use AI in a meaningful way. Hmm. AI should be able to generate or AI should be able to reform the lives of people across the world and not just in the Western world or not just in the English speaking world. And hence, I believe AI has a huge role to play in a market like India. Uh, if you look at today, I think the India's journey with respect to AI is just starting off. There are few large multinational companies technology companies who are building AI application for India. There are companies like ours, uh, which are beginning to build large language models for India. But there are also large number of homegrown domestic companies, including startups, which are either building some sort of either LLM or application, which can help Indian consumers. So, Manu, we, do, we want to make this conversation relevant for people who understand AI fully, but also those of us who've just heard of it as a concept. So, when you say that AI has a lot of applications in India, what exactly do you mean? Where are you thinking? Which industries? Uh, there could be so many applications for AI, especially in a country like India. Uh, it could easily be integrated into programs, large-scale programs such as Digital India, Startup India, 
uh, and others and can really help supercharge them. Uh, you can use AI for medical, for example, people living in small towns and villages, uh, they can get access to medical uh, help and medical support using AI. It could also be used for individual learning. For example, people can build uh, uh, education tools or applications in, based on personal needs using AI. Or it could also be used for content industry. You can actually make songs, videos using AI. Yeah. Actually, the list is endless on what all AI can and cannot do. Uh, but Manu, you know, you run G42, uh, you've created Nanda, which is also an LLM. But first, can you just simplify it for our viewers this morning who are a little confused about what exactly is LLM? Could you simply sort of put it out there if you had to explain to a five-year-old? You know, large language model or LLM as we know it, is an artificial intelligence or AI program that can recognize text or an audio or a video feed and can do tasks. For example, you can ask questions on tell me about India's history or you can ask him to write a paragraph or a poem or do mm. tasks like maybe analyze a balance sheet or generate a video or maybe compose a song for you. So it's an intelligent model which looks at information and then does something for you. It is typically trained on very large scale data sets, mm. uh, like billions and billions of words or text or songs mm. or audio. And using those data sets, using the information which goes into the model, uh, then it is able to generate meaningful output. Okay, Manu, now let's ask you about the thing you're here to tell us all about. The Hindi LLM that you have developed, that G42 has developed. What's the process of developing something like that? What do you use as your data sets, for example? So, um, uh, the process of Hindi LLM basically starts by just collecting data uh, of Hindi language. And uh, this is a pretty tough task because all of us in India our uh, written communication uh, a lot of times is in English. So what we have is digitized content is majority in English. So you have to collect good quality data. Uh, so LLM is a little bit like baby. Uh, if you are thinking of a young baby and if you do not feed good quality food to the baby, the health of the baby will not be great or for any individual. So LLM or large language model, if you do not feed good quality data, the output that the LLM will generate might not be of the best quality. So it basically starts by just collecting massive billions mm. and trillions of tokens, which is words of data, meaningful, good quality data. You collect it, you put it, you train it on billions of different parameters, and then you find in it using large number of question answer sets, uh, which could be about history, it could be about geography, it could be about probabilistic uh, questions like maths, uh, or could be anything else. Uh, so it requires weeks and months of a huge amount of effort by data scientists. Uh, so we built this model mm. uh, when we started thinking of building a Hindi model. The first and the most basic step was to just collect large number of large amount of both Hindi and English data, which was relevant uh, in the context of Indian culture, uh, Indian history, Indian geography, etc. Okay, interesting. But uh, give us some end use cases, some examples of how Nanda will be used across the country, going from a part the obvious of getting it to write a song for you, paint a picture for you, make a video for you. Like apart from all of this, any end uh, use cases that can be used by the masses more constructively? So I can give you um, maybe two or three examples. Uh, we were chatting, we were talking to the CEO of one of the large banks in India. And uh, the issue that they had was uh, two. One, they wanted to understand, uh, they have the issue insurance policies. And if you look at defining a particular insurance product, coming up with all the terms and conditions, sometimes it can take weeks or sometimes even months. Now, if you use and this, of course, has to be done both in English as well as Hindi or any vernacular language. And the, the use case that they had was they can basically use a model like Tanda. And the work which is done in weeks or months can actually be done 
in just few minutes mm. uh, of course you will need somebody who is an expert to just go through it and ensure that the proofreading and the work is fine but it can really help solve this uh, we were talking to one of the company which is into the lending space uh, they were saying they need help with fraud detection uh, where uh, a lot of work on fraud detection is done using computers but also human intervention is required Very critical. and they would mm. want to replace that human intervention uh, with an mm. ai model uh, then there are a lot of customer care applications. For example, if you're shopping something on e-commerce or if you're uh, shopping or ordering something uh, so, or to, something to eat, a lot of that work can actually be done or can be simplified using AI. Uh, last example that I, would, that I would give, something which I think all of us will relate to, uh, something from the movie industry. We were talking to the uh, founder CEO of one of the large uh, movie houses in uh, Mumbai. And uh, the person mentioned that uh, for them to develop the entire plan on where to shoot movies, how to shoot movies, how to match dates or different actors, uh, how should the entire sequence look like, uh, in which locations, it, it it takes a lot of effort, sometimes weeks and uh, and and uh, sometimes even longer, uh, uh, by one of the uh, one of their key key guys, and all of, all of them can be just shortened and can be done by AI. AI can predict on which location should shoot, uh, what should be the sequence of shoots. Uh, which actor should come at what point of time so that uh, this minimum uh, wasted of time, all of that work can be actually planned by AI. Wow. Okay, Manu, before we let you go, uh, the whole world is running seemingly on AI, but we just do need to ask you, why call it Nanda? Why go with that? So uh, when we built, uh, uh, so we at G42, when we built our first model, uh, which was a bilingual English and Arabic model, we decided to name it after the largest mountain peak in UAE, uh, which is Jabal Jais. So the model is called as Jais, J-A-I-S. Uh, then when we were thinking of building a model for India, uh, uh, the bilingual Hindi English, English model, we thought of naming it after one of the highest peaks in India. And the second largest peak in India is Nanda Devi. And we just thought the name Nanda uh, was pretty nice, uh, fit into the cultural nuances of the country. And that's why we decided to call it Nanda. Sweet. You've got a little bit of an India touch over there. Uh, Manu, thanks so much for joining us. I'm not sure how that example of uh, going through actors' dates and all is going to go down in Bollywood. A lot of producers are, you know, really like sort of wondering what's happening over there. But we leave it for Bollywood to sort of figure that out. We've got more on AI coming up. We're not done just yet. Right. So